We're going to go to Acts, the first chapter. The Bible says in Acts 1, the first account I made to the office was continuous report about all things that Jesus began to do and teach. Until the day when he ascended to heaven, he had by the Holy Spirit given instructions to the apostles, special messengers whom he had chosen. To these men, he also chose himself alive after his suffering and disseminated. And on the cross, by a series of many infallible proofs and unquestionable demonstration occurring to them over a period of 40 days talking to them about the things concerning the kingdom of God. While being together and eating with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father had promised, of which he said, you heard of me, for John's baptized with water, but you will be baptized and empowered and united with the Holy Spirit. Not long from now, so when they had come together, they asked him repeatedly, Lord, are you at this time reestablishing the kingdom and restoring it to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the uphots which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power and the ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be witness to tell people about me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth. We're going to skip down to the 12th verse. Acts 1 and 12. Then the disciples returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olive, Olive Road, which is near Jerusalem on their Sabbath day journey, less than one mile away when they had entered the city. They went upstairs to the upper room, where they were standing indefinitely, that is Peter and John and his brother James. Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Nathaniel, Matthew, James the Atheist, Simon the Zeliot, and Judas Thaddeus, the son of James. All these were with one mind and one purpose, were continually devote themselves to prayer, waiting together along with the women, and marrying the mother of Jesus. I dare to say, waiting on the Lord. This message is called Waiting on the Lord. You may be seated. I didn't say waiting. Waiting on. on. You finish it. Who are we waiting on? The Lord. We're not waiting on a prophet. We're not waiting on an apostle. We're not waiting on an evangelist. We're not waiting on a. We're not waiting on an apostle secretary. But we're waiting on who? Oftentimes we come to church and we come to church to look at people and to size people up and to see what they're speaking about. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, the church is in trouble. He said, because she does not worship me anymore. She worship things. She worship I she worship how long she been saved. She worship accolades. She worship worship, but she don't worship me. I said, God, what do you mean? There was a post that I seen the other day. And I was strolling down, getting ready to post about the service. And somebody put a picture that guarded me because the Holy Ghost spoke to me. 
He said, son, he said, they love ministry, but they don't love me. We have got so common with God to a point that we don't even worship when we come to the sanctuary. We got to wait for people to say, lift up your hands. We are so far from God that when we in church, we have to wait for the praise and worship leader to tell it's all right to dance. We are calm. We have mistreated the presence of the Lord and we have forgotten that it's all about him. Can somebody get this baby? It's all about him. I gotta say it's all about the Holy Spirit. It's all about the Holy Spirit. So we have church. We go through the motions, but there is no deliverance. We go through the motions, but there is no breakthrough. We go through the motions, but nobody is saved. Because we don't wait on him. If he's not on program. We have learned how to do church. We have went to seminary school. We have had people blow on us, lay hands on us, uh, throw towels at us, and all types of stuff. But the only problem is, is that we have lost our worship. I gotta say, God wants us to worship for real. Come on. The problem is, it's not God is not doing miracles no more. The problem is, we don't have faith for the miracles. Because we think it's Old Testament stuff. I was talking to a man, and sometimes I even hate to even have him around me. I'm just going to be honest. Because he's so traditional. He was raised. A certain way, so because the way he was raised, anything that's outside of what he was taught, not through the Bible, but through his favorite preacher, he does not believe that it's God. And the problem is, is that we try to put limits on God. We say it only takes 15 minutes for God to move. 30 minutes for praise and worship. And about an hour, no longer than an hour for a whole church service. We have got it confused. We feel like we have arrived. We're so important that we don't even give honor to Jesus when we get up to preach. We give so much glory to the man and forget about Jesus. The problem is not that God has stopped being God. The problem is, is that we stop being a servant to him. We come lazy in our prayer life. We expect for the pastor to pray us through, but we won't pray ourselves. We expect the prophet to prophesy to us, but we don't want to pray ourselves. The problem is not that God is through with you. The problem is, is that you are not pursuing him like you're supposed to. Perhaps we're living in a generation of bankers, as Jesus said. People coming from Tisha Shalom, for a read, a person with soft rain. In other words, they're coming for fashion. They're not coming because they want God. They're coming because they want to see what it's all this talk about. 
They're not coming because they're hungry for God. Some people are coming because they want a wife. Some people are coming because they want their child saved. Some people are coming because they want their ministry to blow up. Some people are coming for all these things. But how many people are coming for Jesus? The hour of the pervert is no more. God is breaking the power of perverted preachers. A lot of preachers preach themselves and not living what they preach. And by the way, thank God for my milk and honey. Let's give her a great big hand and clap. You will never see the glory of God with unforgiveness. Do you hear me? Some of us have seen God move, but we don't see a move anymore because we have invited praises and worship leaders, preachers, prophets, apostles, pastors, the pack out churches, and God has left the building because it's entertainment. So because it's entertainment, people's lives are not changing. Do you hear what I'm saying? And the problem is, is that we think we're going to God a service. Sometimes I was in church and I sat down and I stayed in church all day. And you think God is pleased? See, you got to mess up. A lot of you saying I want to go to heaven, but you ain't even worried of heaven because you complain about being in an hour of service. You say you want to be in, in, in heaven, but you can't praise them down on earth. Only praises that praise God will make it to heaven. You say you want to make it to heaven, but you don't even talk to God over 30 minutes in a day. You're on the phone. You're gossiping. Backbiting. Creating discord. You understand what I'm saying? Listen to this. We're going to go to Galatians 5 and 19 and 21. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. You can give her the baby amen. I think she wants the baby amen. Glory to God. Galatians 5 and 19 to 21. Amen. Thank God for our photographer. Amen. She helps record the service. Amen. Glory to God. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. When you get there, I want you to shout amen. Come on, shout amen. Now the practice of sinful nature is clearly evident. They are sexual. Hold on, let me let me slow down. Oh y'all done. Now this is talking about, let me slow down. Some of you are not walking in glory because you got sin in your life. Some of you are not seeing a miracle working power because they're sin. And see, I'm going to show you there's two ways. The person that's praying with you doesn't just have to believe. Jesus said, will you believe? I got to say, I got to believe too. I got to believe too. Come on, I want you to say, I got to believe too. I got to believe too. Because oftentimes we say, I didn't get this, I didn't get that because the preacher was lying and doing this, but no, some of you don't believe. And sometimes it's unforgiveness. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it says in Galatians 5 and 19, now the practice of sinful nature, I heard it say sinful nature. Sinful nature. That means it's in, it's in, it's in a man's nature, amen? Glory to God, this is Pastor Fiend. Amen. Oh, I don't need it. Amen. God bless you. Listen to this. Rebunk responsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, 
thought through hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, dispute, dissension, faction, promote apparency, envy, drunkenness. These I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I didn't say the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Amen. You got jealousy in your heart. You wonder why the miracle gifts won't flow. You got envy in your heart. You wonder why the prophetic won't flow. You got unforgiveness in your heart. You wonder why healing won't flow. These things cut off the depth of God, and God cannot move in a simple hand. Oftentimes, we say, I love you, God. I worship you, God. I surrender all to you, God. But what we don't do is surrender. We say we surrender only for a moment. When it's convenient. But what happens if God say, I want for you to love the Lord in your wife? What if God say, when your child is dying, I want you to still serve me even if they die? Some of you have not even seen the death of God. You only seen the goodness of God. You think God is good because everything is going good in your life. How many people can still testify that I trust you and I love you, Lord? When you lose your house, when you lose your car, when you're living outside, when you got to walk and catch buses and trains, and you got to beg people, and something you're not used to having to ask people for now, you're on the other side. How many people can say they still love them? Most of us love God out of fear and not out of love. What do you mean? Most of us, when we say we love God, the reason we say we love God is because somebody said you're going to hell. But as I often give a metaphor, a man and a woman that's in the bed together, that's sleeping together because he got a gun doesn't mean she loves him. She's doing it out of fear because she's afraid for her life. See, but soon as somebody calls on the other line and say, is everything okay? That woman's going to scream and she's going to try to get out of that relationship. This is why people don't stay in God. Because she serve them in fear, not out of relationship. He said, son, tell my church that I love them. I'm not angry with them anymore. You are looking for God to kill you. He said, for the son of God, when he came, long as there's time on the earth, he said, he's given a space to repent. Even for Jezebel, he gave space for her to repent. It's not God's will that any should perish. Not your family, not your friends, not your community, no one to depart and hear God say, you're going to damnation forever. It's not God's will. If that was the will of God, he would have never came to the cross, died and resurrected on the third day. His will is that we receive him in love. Some of us have words hanging over in our life that are fearful, that are dreadful. We don't trust God like we say we trust Him. We say, I love you, God, but I'm not sure if you really love Him. Because when a preacher say, I want you to give an offering, you say, they just robbing people. The rich man did not follow Jesus no more because he loved his money more than he loved God. You have 
have to realize if you want to make it in, you're going to have to repent and do it wholeheartedly. Not because a preacher told you, because you love them. I was laying down in the bed and the Lord felt me bullets going everywhere. Just drive by bullets going everywhere. He said, tell the people I'm not playing. He said, I love them, but I'm not playing. There's grace, but there's also truth. When Jesus forgave the woman in John the eighth chapter, he said, go and sin no more. We're forgiven, but we continue to go in the cycles of sin. God says it's time for us to grow up. I heard it say grow up. I heard it say grow up. If you grow up, the Holy Spirit will work miracles in your life. If you grow up, you got family members that you're not talking to because they said something, they did something to you. See, in heaven, if your family member, you got so much hate in you that you say you can't be in a room with them in heaven, perhaps this is the reason why Jesus said there's no space for you in heaven. Because you can't even talk to them when you see them on earth. How can you say you love God who you've never seen and you don't love your brother or sister? This is the spirit that's in the land. Competition. I didn't say competition. We got to get rid of competition. I want everybody that has the Holy Ghost, I want you to stand up. Because we get to do this and we get to do this quick. Everybody that has the Holy Ghost, I want you to pray in your heavenly language. Begin to talk in your heavenly language. Come on, open up your mouth. We're not here because we love to be seen, but we are here to reason with the Lord. Isaiah 1 and 18. Come and reason with me, says the Lord. Some of our family members need to be saved. Some of our family members need to be delivered. Some of our family members need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're not waiting for a certain sound that comes from a musician. He said it came from the belly. Out of your belly shall flow many rivers of living water. Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. We got to let the principality just stand. Every time I walk down here, I see police officers. I see crackheads. I see dope kings. I see prostitutes. It's, every tra it's a trap on every corner. But people still struggle out on drugs. When Zion cried out, she brought forward. Cry out. Cry out for your children. Cry out for your neighborhood. There are riots. People are breaking into people's houses. People are shooting people in their houses. You can't even come outside without getting killed. You're being arrested just for crossing the road. And you think you got time. We're living in a time where there's been ready to be a civil war. And God's people has to be on the wall praying. It's praying time. I say it's praying time. I say it's praying time. Open up your mouth. The spirit of God makes that cool in the land, but when we open up our mouth, that spirit of all is going to have the drug dealer say, what must I do to be saved? When you open up your mouth, that person that's Please do it, everybody. And I will be healed. Open up your mouth. Baba, your 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 Baba, Baba, your 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 Baba, Ba 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 Don't give up the word is to pray. 
Me a house of prayer. Not a place to raise money. Too many people having church to raise money and not to lift up Jesus. Pray. Pray. Come on, I need you to pray. 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 Two so the people die, one minute they die, the next 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 minute Ye baby can't do the robo consisi and that a baba carabas. God is bringing judgment. This is the kid in me. Because they want a certain town, they care about their church, their ministry, but they don't care about him. Make it baby, 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 Mama, ya, ma, ya, ya. Open up your mouth. Yeah, 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 y